All right. So like I said, this is a perfect study tool. Before we get started, let's kind of redefine what each one of these are. We've got three forms of heat transfer. My first one is, someone give me one. Emerson, radiation. That's the one that I was thinking of. And what does that R in radiation stand for? Go ahead. Rays, right? It reminds me of rays. And I think rays from the sun. Who thinks they can define this for me? It's not just rays, it's a very it's very specific. Caroline. Electromagnetic waves. So this is when heat is transferred using and I'm just going to preface heat transferred so I don't have to rewrite that every time using electromagnetic and you're going to learn more about that uh mag magnet what is happening with my brain magnetic waves uh you're going to learn more about what electromagnetic waves are in eighth grade or seventh grade but for now it's just a type it's just a wavelength so it's it's how he, just think about it that's why i put it as rays instead right um is there touching involved? No touchy. I'm not touching. So in your brochure, you have to be very specific. Like so I saw some people wrote a candle as their example um, for radiation. A candle could work, but you could say feeling the heat when you put your hand above a candle, right? Because if you're putting your hand on the candle, number one, you're gonna get burned. <laughs> And number two, what form would that actually be? Call it out. Conduction, right? So keep that as keep that in mind. What's another example? Somebody new, Mazzy. Convection. And what does that C in convection stand for, Ayana? Currents. Very good. And I, if you guys remember, I did this last time. It may seem like forever ago. But when we talk about currents, we're talking about cool air sinking, right? So remember I made the V and arrow. And hot air rising. We, this, is, uh, this is why it's normally warmer upstairs. How many of you have an attic in your house, an attic? I do, and when I was a kid, I had an attic. And I really wanted my room to be in the attic. I just thought that that would be like the coolest thing. And my dad was like, no, because it's so hot up there. Like you would literally, you would die because there's no air, like no circulation of air up there. And I'm like, but that's fine. Like, I like the heat, you know, trying to make, make excuses. But I'm telling you, it was like for real hot. That's because all the heat in the house rises, right? And I have a really, not cool, but I was walking out my door yesterday and I saw an example of, convection and I had to stop and take a slow motion video of it so I could show you and then I was late to work but it was all for the sake of science class so this is heat transfer through what forms of matter solid liquid or gas Caroline and liquid so this is through liquid or gas because um Con conduction is through solids. So this is through liquid or gas. Well, and it could be, well, we'll go over that more specifically. So it's through liquid or gas using currents. And if you want to specify, this is when hot rises, hot air or liquid rises and cold sinks. I'm going to send that video to myself real quick so you can see. I don't know if you'll think if you can see it as well, but we'll try. And then last but not least, I'm going to put conduction over here. And this one I actually think is the easiest to remember if you use our tricks. What was the trick that I taught you for this one, Carlos? Yeah, that D stands for direct. 
and the C stands for contact. So direct contact. So this one involves all the touching. When you burn your, anytime you burn yourself, you touch a hot spoon, you burn yourself, conduction. You put a pancake in a pan, conduction, right? Um, what, when I cook in my oven and I use a metal pan, is that conduction or radiation? Metal pan. Bishop? Conduction, because the metal is a conductor, right? But what if I use the glass pan? Radiation, because it's moving through the glass like sunlight moves through windows, right? So this is all the touching. Perfect. So now that we've like totally brain dumped on our page, we can figure out what each number is an example of. So look, the question says, which numbered part of the picture represents the way energy from the sun reaches Earth? What form of heat transfer is how this energy from the sun reaches Earth? Can I have somebody new? Oh, everybody participated today. So, Ethan, do you remember? How does heat from the sun get to Earth? Is it through currents, through rays, or through touching? It, th I want you to think um, more like, so I could see how like the Earth is heated through currents on the inside, but um, it's not, if it was circulating, then if it was currents, then Earth would be really cold, wouldn't it? Think about it, wouldn't that happen? If it, what'd you say? Do you, oh, what'd you say, baby? Yeah, because the cold air would go down, so the surface of Earth would be super cold, and then up in the atmosphere would be hot, but isn't it actually the opposite? And that, we'll learn more about why that is when we talk about the layers of the atmosphere uh, next week. So I can see where you thought that, because it's through air. But what are we, what is the correct answer? Go ahead, Bishop. Radiation, absolutely. Ray, radiation, like the sun rays. Um, did you guys know that Jacksonville used to actually have their baseball team used to be, or isn't it the sun rays, right? Because we get so much sun. So I was thinking, but that we also have the Tampa Bay rays, right? But those are sting rays, so it's a little bit different. <laughs> but yeah, we used to be the sun rays. Now we the scrimps. So um, it's radiation. I'm looking for which one of these numbers is the same as radiation. So you're right, let's not skip, skip though, because our goal, I said, label what each one is an example of. Because remember in the homework, I asked you guys to label examples in your house? Well, here's one example of each, at least, right? So when I look at one, it's the heat from a burner, but is the burner touching the pot? No, I'm holding it over the pot, which is not gonna be as effective, but it eventually it would still heat, like over a campfire, right? So what would A be an example of? Emerson, radiation, because I'm not touching. So according, we matched, right? Radiation, radiation, but we're not done yet. We want to make sure that we have the right answer. So we're going to go ahead and check the other three. I also have two. Remember when we talked about boiling water, we said that the hot air moves, or the hot water moves up, and then when it gets to the top, what happens? What happens? It evaporates, or pops, right? And it turns into a vapor, which is a gas, right? And didn't we say it's through liquid or gas? So this is steam at this point. And have you ever held your hand over a boiling water and you're like, oh, that's hot? because the steam itself is hot. You can actually burn yourself with steam. So what would two be an example of? What would the steam coming up be an example of, Carlos? Convection, very good. And that's steam. Because steam is just hot gas moving up. 
I don't know why, but I feel obligated to do three lines. <laughs> Convection, very good. So now I've got three, I'm touching. You can see the hand, touchy, touchy. I'm touching the handle, Mazzy. Was it? Convection or conduction? Conduction, sorry. The headset helps in some ways, but hinders in others. Yeah, conduction because I'm touching the handle. And if it was a rubber handle, would it be transferring heat? No, because it's that rubber is actually an insulator, which is why all of our wires are covered in rubber so that it doesn't like spark me. But if it was metal or iron, it would. I only cook in cast iron. Um, it actually adds iron to your food. And I think that um, it just reminds me of like when you camp or cook over a campfire, it just tastes so good. But if I were to touch that handle, I would burn myself. <laughs> so I actually have little things like slips that go over the handles so that I can move them. And then last but certainly not least, I've got that boiling water inside the pot. What is that? Boiling water inside the pot. The cold is sinking down to get reheated and the hot heats up and goes to the top. Go ahead, Bishop. Convection, absolutely. So here we've got great examples for your homework. So you are more than welcome to use any of these in your examples, but you have to be able to explain uh, in your brochure, and I'll go over that rubric with you, you have to be able to explain why each is, is an example. You can't just list it as an example. Because if you, like I said, if you wrote candle, well, that could be conduction or radiation, depending on the way that you're, you're messing with it, right? Is your hand over it or is it in it? Over it if it's radiation, but if it's conduction, you're touching it, okay? So what would the answer to this be? Call it out. One, so A. Do you see why I would put this as the first question on the test? Yeah. Um, so go ahead and get your homework out. We're going to go over that really quick. And I want to talk to you about some of those examples. And then you're going to have the rest of the time to, um, you're going to have the rest of the time to work on the brochure after we go over what I expect. If I didn't technically say you guys could have a snack right now, but if you haven't had it yet, go ahead and enjoy it. Yes. Yes. I had to like separate, I had some students come back and join us. So I had to like make some extra room. So go ahead, that's fine, baby. Yes. So we can get a new folder, um, but I would, um, you can grab one of these or actually you might have to do it on a separate, I would do it on a separate sheet of paper because I need these for the, but you can come grab this baby. Um, Ethan, oh, this for Ethan. I want you to do yours. You can grab a separate sheet of paper and uh, make it three columns on it. Okay, perfect, perfect. I have spare paper over here, love, in the front. Okay, so if you guys remember, and I'm gonna pull this up on the computer. This is also in Schoology. It's under the date for the 5th because that was the last time I saw you guys. Any questions about that though? Okay. Okay. So I kind of went and took some notes on here to make sure that we were ready because you guys should have already had these definitions done. Um, same thing we just did in our do now, right? Where the D and the C in conduction stood for direct contact. It's heat transfer through direct contact or touching. That radiation stands for rays through electromagnetic waves or rays. And I specified no touching. So when you do your brochure, I need you to specify that whatever it is, you're not touching it. You're holding it from a distance. Um, and then convection, that C stands for currents, but if you want to 
draw the current like we did as well as an example to keep it in your brain where the V is the down and the T is back up, that's fine too. And that's heat transfer through liquid or gas using currents where hot air or water rises and cold air sinks. So I'm, gonna, I'm still waiting for this thing to send to me. So as soon as it does, I'll show you my example that I had to stop and take a video of. We'll see if it works. All right. So I want to see what examples you guys came up with at home. Like what, I remember they have to be in your house. So I had like somebody write the sun as their example. The sun is everywhere, but specifically how would that apply in your house for radiation? Does that make sense? Um, because in the brochures, I want you guys to say like heat transfer in your home as if you were like, you know how like air, air conditioning companies are advertising? If you're almost doing a brochure to advertise heat transfer inside the house, okay? And then that way when you go home, you could you know, bother your parents and you're like, that's conduction and that's radiation, right? I, I can't help it, I do it on a daily basis. <laughs> All right, so what did you guys come up with for conduction? Micah, do you have any ideas? Any ideas for heat transfer that's conduction? What's something inside your house that you might be touching? That's hot. If you can think of any, I want you to send it to me in the chat, okay? And I'll share with the class. What do you think, Carlos? Well, give me one for this. You could definitely think of one that, what's something that you've touched and you've, you've burned yourself on? Okay, so we could say touching the oven, or I said open, the oven, and I'm also gonna say stove. Give me another one, Mazzy. Perfect. Heat from a burner transfers to a pan. So like when I'm, when I am um, cooking, and I think I told you guys this before, like my Sunday ritual is pancakes. Like I love eating pancakes on Sundays. Um, so anytime I cook my pancakes, right? Bishop? An iron, that's a great one. So, and I wanna specify this one because what also comes out of an iron when you release the button? Steam, right? So I'm gonna say an iron touching your clothes, right? Because we could also say the steam from an iron. Um, uh, what else? Ladies, you might use this kind of iron. <laughs> All right, Bishop, go ahead. A flat iron, I just wanted to see if he knew. <laughs> or a curling iron, right? And that's touching your hair. So a curling iron or a flat iron. Yes? Did you have a different one? A toaster oven. So um, I'm going to say, you guys know like the grate in a toaster oven? Touching pizza crust. I'm going to be very, very specific about that because there are some ovens that are convection ovens that cook through circulation. And believe it or not, toasters, when you have like a toaster you put your bread in, have, if you ever look inside, it's not touching the heat. Your bread is in a little cage. Have you ever noticed that? Your bread sits in a little cage and that the heat coils from the side heat the bread without touching it. Because otherwise it would catch your bread on fire. So, um, and that would be an example of if it, because it's not touching, that's a different example. So I'm going to say a toaster oven, um, touching bagel bites. It's pizza anytime. All right. So I think those are pretty good examples. Um, we could say touching a hot pan, burning your tongue. Um, tongue. So all of those would be examples, but I'm not gonna write, where's, where's bites? Does that say bites? Okay, thank you. It's hard for me to see from over here. Um, all of those would be examples. So I'm gonna leave this up when you guys are making your brochures too. And then if you guys have any other original ideas that you can think of, and it doesn't have to be something that happened yesterday, but think through your daily routine, right? Um, 
things that might also apply. So radiation, I said one just now. Uh, Carlos. Okay, go ahead. A microwave. Um, and look, y'all, it has the word wave in it. That is literally the easiest example because it has part of the definition in it, right? A microwave isn't touching any of your food. It's not, it's the waves that are emitted. That's why they tell you not to stand so close to the microwave. I had some people put, I had one person put, to, not in this class, toxic waste. That's a different kind of radiation. Remember, it's nuclear radiation, it's very different. Um, and then like that, that's the kind of radiation that come, remember the Fukushima Daiichi plant that um, was destroyed during the Japanese tsunami? That's that kind of radiation, so it's different. That we're talking about heat specifically here. Yeah, I would hope not. Um, I didn't even think about it like that, but, but yeah. <laughs> Give me another example inside your house. Inside your house. Emerson? A space, so a space heater. Um, up north, I remember using these all the time, just like sitting right in front of it. What else could you sit in front of to warm you up? That would be an example, Carlos. A fire, like a fireplace. Um, if you remember Bill Nye in the video, he was sitting by the fire and he was like, my front is hot, but my back is cold. And it's because the heat was being absorbed from his body in the front, but the back was still being exposed to the cold air that was circulating in the room. For me, I'd be like 50-50, right? <laughs> Get a little bit of both. What's another one? What was the one that I talked about to you, Caroline? Yeah, bread in a toaster. It's not, it sits in its little cage and it doesn't actually touch the heat coils. So it's different. What is the example in an oven? What kind of pan? You guys can call it out. A glass pan. So uh, cooking in a glass pan. That's when, what is happening with my typing abilities? Um, when Bill and I dressed up as a female, <laughs> I think it was Bill and I, was it him? Or maybe it was a different person, but they were like, we're going to make brownies, right? Um, and I didn't even think about it like that, but I have one of those pans that's all rails. You know what I mean? So it kind of looks like a candy land board, but it makes it so that every side of the brownie is crispy, right? And um, that's because it's talking or it's, it's touching the metal and the metal is a conductor. So metal would be conduction, but glass is radiation. Just like when, um, um, when it gets uh, the sun heating a room through the window. Have you ever noticed that they've had, uh, it says done, what is happening? Um, have you ever noticed when your windows are open that it's hotter? Yeah, and, and they even have curtains. Like the reason that we have curtains is to, like if you're paying all that money to keep your house cool, just put curtains in there because it shuts out the sun, not only the light when you need it to be dark, but also the heat that comes with that. Any other ideas? Is there anything that you, now looking back at your paper that you're like, you want to run it by me to see if it qualifies? A light bulb. So a light bulb would work. Like that light bulb over there is actually a, a heat light bulb. So, but remember, specified not touching, right? Because the second I touch that, that's conduction, and then I'm going to get burnt. So you could say like holding your hand away from a light bulb, holding your hand away from a candle flame. Okay. So just specify that. Um, I can't add it on here. I'll put it here real quick though. So. Holding your hand away from a light bulb or candle flame. 
So all of those would be examples. Just specify that you're not touching it. I would hope that you wouldn't touch it too, you know. <laughs> all right, convection. This one, this one is a little bit more difficult. This one's a little bit more difficult, but think about the currents here. What are we, what, what is uh, the, the one that I used when I made hot chocolate? Mazzy? Okay, so the steam from uh, your hot chocolate. How did I make the hot chocolate, Ayana? Boiling water. Um, oh, because that that is the primo example because it actually, and I wish that mine was clear so we could watch it. Um, but it's not clear. There is a clear one in the teacher's lounge, but it doesn't belong to me, so I don't want to take it. <laughs> My video won't come in. Maybe I can show you on the on this. Um, Emerson, a fan, because it's circulating, a heating fan. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say air conditioning on that one. And the reason I'm going to say that is because it's blowing out cold air that sinks to the bottom and then the warm air sink goes to the top and then it starts circulating, right? Um, there's another one. This, so this is what I'm going to, I don't know if you'll be able to see it in the video. I'm going to try really hard. But so I was walking out of my house yesterday and I had the dryer going, okay? And the dryer is circulating hot air. Um, but you guys know that on the outside of your house, there's something that releases that hot air. You know what I'm talking about? It's like a little vent. And because it's cold outside, as soon as that hot air hits that cold air, air, what is going to be created? What? Smoke or steam, right? It's just like when we think about the water cycle, um, when that heat rises and then it rises to the top where the clouds are, it creates that condensation, right? So this is what, I tried to slow-mo it. I don't, oops. Come on, Miss Curly. All right, so let's see if it works. So there's my front door, okay? I don't know if it'll work. And there's the vent right there. You guys see the vent? In my festive little house, okay. So it, I think it's hard to see, but the smoke is coming out of the vent and you can see it. Uh, if I play it faster, you guys, can, you might not be able to see it. I'll send it again. But do you see it? It's moving up. So let's, I'm gonna kind of play it faster. I think it works better when it's fast. So watch up at the top, okay? You see it moving upwards? That's because it's hot. It's hot, so it's rising. It came from all the way down there to all the way up there, right? So we could say laundry is an example. Um, but in your brochure, if you're gonna use this, I want you to say like the heat from the dryer vent rising, okay? That way, let's say you are teaching somebody else about this. If I were to give these brochures to third graders, they should be able to learn what conduction, convection, and radiation is from your brochure. That's the goal. I might even do it. I might even give it to a third grade class and then ask them to, fill, to give them a little test. And if they pass, it means that you did a really good job on your brochure, right? I think that'd be fun, like a challenge. Um, yes. I will. I will. I, I think that'd be a great, um, a great challenge. So I'll get with them. I think, and so you should be writing it so that somebody at a third grade level could understand it, right? If that's our goal is to teach third graders about it, your job is to write it so that a third grader would be under, be able to understand, which means you should probably include what? Pictures, right? like we did with our, our foldables. Yes. You can, whatever you'd like to do. Um, if you draw it, 
like for example, if you did convection and you labeled it, or and you were drawing it, you might want to label like hot air rising, cold air sinking, right? Boiling water, hot water rising, cold water sinking. Is there any that you have on your paper that you feel like after going over it together is questionable? Okay. Um, I want to give you guys the time to work on your brochure. I'm going to go ahead and pass out what that looks like. The, the, um, the rubric. And then depending on how far you guys get on it, we, I do have a cahoot for us to play just to kind of review some of these, or we may do that as a do now one day. Um, so I'm going to kind of measure how, how you're doing. You will have all weekend to finish this as well. I'm not collecting this until Monday from you guys. So that way, if you want to go home and just work on it, um, or if you have a younger sibling, you can say like, you know, kind of have them check it out, right? So um, give me one second. I'm going to pass these rubrics out so you know exactly what is, uh, what is required of you. If you're on Schoology, this rubric can be found under, we're in period six right now. We're in unit three. And we're in, can you believe we're in week 17? Yeah, crazy. Um, and it's going to be right here. Go ahead and take a look at the rubric. Um, you get one point or technically two, because like I said, this is going to be out of 10, just for telling me or writing all three forms of heat transfer. Point. They're clearly and correctly defined. When I say this, please, on your paper, I'm actually going to write on it myself on, over here. You might want to make the note in your own words. You can use the, the ones that we've done in class, but I noticed when I saw some people's homework who had submitted it already, they just took a definition offline online. And if I asked them to explain what that meant, I know that they couldn't do it. Remember, you're writing it as if you were writing it to third graders, right? So put it in terms a third grader could understand. So that's what I want you to think. Write it like a third grader could understand it. All three forms of heat transfer are represented clearly and correctly by a picture or pictures. Doesn't mean you need to have an example for each, or a, a picture for each example. Just at least one picture per form of heat transfers. So that would be a, a minimum of how many pictures? Three, minimum of three pictures. But when I say minimum, it doesn't mean that you only have to do three. Remember, you're gonna have six tabs on a brochure and I'm gonna show you what I mean by brochure here. Each form of heat transfer has at least three examples of each, just like you did on the homework. So how many examples should you have total? Nine, right? So it's a total of nine examples. 
And then it's easy to read and understand. Remember, we're talking about giving them to third graders. When I say easy to read, if you know your handwriting is awful, you can type it or slow down. <laughs> if you know that when you write in pencil, it's very light, you might want to do a draft in pencil and then write in pen, right? If you know that we all know that writing in yellow uh, color pencil can't be seen, what should you not do? Write in yellow color pencil, right? Make it so it's easy to see, easy to understand. Does everybody understand the five things I'm asking for? Very simple, very direct. When you make a brochure, if you've ever done this before, it's kind of like when, you've, when you're folding a paper to go into an envelope, okay? So you're folding one paper in. So I've got one paper in, the other paper over. So I've got six sides here. Nobody said you had to put everything all on the same side, right? I could do, so I should have, this should be like heat transfer at home. And then I could draw like a house with a fire inside. I don't know, right? Whatever. A nice cover with your name on it. That kind of looks like a house on fire, but that's an example of heat transfer, I guess, right? Um, so like a little introductory picture with your name and a title, okay? Right, you wanna make it attractive. Like a third grader, if it looks like this, do you think they're gonna be interested in actually reading it? No, that's why third grade books have pictures. <laughs> How many of you like reading books that have pictures more than books that don't have pictures? I like when I get a little picture, even if it's just like a little, like at the beginning of a chapter, right? It kind of gets me like excited as to what's gonna happen in the chapter. Huh? Yeah, and like um, the picture can help you picture it, exactly. Um, it's like you get to create your own movie. Uh, Caroline. No, I just made that up. It could just be, if you wanna think of something more clever, that's, you know. That's fine too. Um, so if you want, as long as you have the title on each one, you're fine, right? So let's say I wanted to do like radiation on this one. And then on this one, I could do radiation examples. So I don't have to only use one piece. I could make it a big chunk. I could do convection on this one. And then convection examples. That way I can show clearly show pictures, right? And they're not small, because if they're small, do you think someone's gonna be able to understand? No, right? I hate when they're like too small, like especially in our science book, and I'm like, what is happening? And then look, oh wait, just kidding. I can do, and then I, if I wanted to, I could split it. Um, I could do like conduction and conduction examples. It doesn't have to be set up like that, but look, you're gonna have five, one, two, three, four, five different um, sections that you can use for whatever you want. If you wanted to do radiation, convection, conduction, and then have examples on the back too, that might actually be better, right? I actually think that that would be better. So. Let me show you what that'll look like because my brain wasn't functioning when I made the original example. So in my head, I was like, we're gonna have six extra, p extra slides. That's not true. So title page, then we can open it and then we've got our radiation, conduction, convection and then on the back too I can do examples examples right 
however you want to do it it's up to you i'm not telling you but those are two different ideas of how you could structure this okay you have the remainder of the class period which is oh, about an hour almost a little over an hour because you know i'll ask you guys to clean up a little bit beforehand i have colored pencils when you're ready i have markers i have crayons as long as you're not sharing materials with someone else and you sanitize beforehand okay um blank paper is up there i'm here if you have any questions my suggestion would be to draft it out first so that you know it's going to look neat okay all right uh, Micah, do you have any questions about what's expected from you, love? If you would like to share your, a draft with me by the end of class today, I think that'd be a great idea. So share a draft with me, and then I'll give you the go to make it, like, official. Okay? Okay. I can't hear you. I, don't, I, I think there's, it might be something with your mic, love. So what I want you to do is, um, let me hold, let me check something. What I want you to do is um, type it in the chat, okay? All right, so you guys are good to go. Um, come up and grab a piece of paper, and then when you're ready for colored pencils and stuff, I will give it to you. Just raise your hand and let me know.